These seven battery killing mistakes don't look dramatic. They look normal. A quick errand with headlights blazing, a weekend park nose out, a jump start you promise to replace next payday. Then the dash flickers, the starter drags, and the car chooses silence on the one morning you're really late. Batteries rarely fail from one big event. They fade from small habits that drain, overheat, or starve them of charge. Fix the habits and most batteries live years longer. Seriously, today. And to see how tiny choices create big failures will start with the drain you never notice until you do. Now, mistake number seven, parasitic drains you ignore because the car still starts. Modern cars nap with modules awake. Keyless entry, telematics, alarms, infotainment, add a hardwired dash cam, a hot USB charger, a cargo light that never shuts, or a sticky glove box switch, and the battery trickles down while you sleep. Anything over about 50 milliamps at rest is a red flag. Some luxury models tolerate a bit more, but triple that means trouble. The sneaky part, it starts fine for weeks, then a cold snap or four quick errands tips it over. Do this instead. After the car sits locked 30 to 45 minutes, check draw with a clamp meter on the negative cable or pull the fuse to each add-on until the current falls. Wire accessories to a true ignition circuit. Use a dash cam with parking mode cut off and confirm doors and glove box lights actually turn off. Catch the little leak early and the battery stops dying overnight. But heat can kill it even faster, quietly from the inside out. Mistake number six, heat soak and sloppy mounting that cook plates from the inside. Heat ages batteries more than cold. Underhood temps in summer accelerate electrolyte loss and grid corrosion. Roughly every 10 degrees C up doubles chemical aging. A loose or missing hold down lets the case vibrate, shedding active material like dust. Those flakes can short plates and sink capacity. Long sun exposure with the nose facing the afternoon blast bakes the bay even when the engine is off. Do this instead. Use the correct size group so the hold down clamps squarely. Reinstall the factory insulator if your car came with one and replace cracked trays that let the case rock. Park in shade when you can and avoid idling in place for long stretches on extreme heat days. In desert climates or towing rigs, consider a heat shield or relocating to a cooler tray if the manufacturer offers one. Control heat and the chemistry calms, but even a cool battery loses if you never give it time to recover the charge you keep spending. Mistake number five, short trips with heavy accessory load that never let the battery recharge. Every start spends a chunk of charge. If the next drive is five minutes with the blower on high, heated seats on, lights blazing, and wiper slapping, the alternator feeds the cabin instead of the battery. State of charge hovers low. Soft lead sulfate hardens into crystals and capacity shrinks. Do this instead. Once a week, take a 20-30 minute drive at steady speed with big loads off, or give the battery an overnight on a smart maintainer set to the right chemistry, AGM, EFB, or flooded. If your life is all two kilometer hops, schedule a monthly charge the way you schedule oil changes. On start-stop cars, weak auxiliary or incorrect battery types make this worse. Fit the right spec and let the system rest when traffic is crawl and go. Restore charge and sulfation slows, but guessing at faults can undo everything you just fixed. Mistake number four, testing and replacing by guesswork instead of data. Crank slow must be bad is the fastest way to buy parts you don't need or miss the real fault. A tired starter, corroded ground strap, slipping belt, or lazy alternator can mimic a weak battery. Do this instead. Measure resting voltage after sitting overnight, healthy AGM around 12.6 to 12.8 volts. Perform a conductance or proper load test matched to the CCA rating. Watch cranking voltage, don't dip below 9.6 volts at 21 degrees Celsius, and verify alternator output with loads on per spec, often 13.8 to 14.7 volts, temperature dependent. Inspect the main ground from battery to body to engine, green fuzz and loose bolts waste voltage. Test, don't guess, and while you're there, fix the choke point most owners never check. Mistake number three, dirty, loose, or wrong type terminals that choke current. Corrosion is a resistor. Blue fuzz, white crust, or a loose clamp means heat under load and weak charging on the return trip. Mixing side post shims, stacked ring terminals, or cheap top post adapters invites intermittent no starts and melted plastic. Do this instead. Disconnect negative first, then positive. 
Clean posts and clamps with a proper brush. Rinse, dry, and apply a thin protectant film. Torque clamps so you can't twist them by hand. Mount aftermarket rings on the stud dedicated for them, not stacked under the main clamp. If your car uses a smart negative terminal sensor, don't crush it with over-tightening or bury it in grease. Solid connections make every other fix work, but some systems still die early because owners treat modern charging like the carburetor era. Mistake number two, treating start-stop and smart charging systems like old-school electrics. Start-stop cars use EFB or AGM batteries with high cycle life, plus a sensor on the negative terminal that tracks current and temperature. Drop in a cheap flooded battery, skip registering the new unit, or clear codes without resetting charge strategy, and the car overcharges, hot, boiled, or undercharges, sulfated, the symptom looks like bad battery again in months. Do this instead. Replace with the same type and equal or higher approved capacity, and then code or register, so the BMS relearns state of charge and internal resistance. Update software if a service bulletin calls for it, and confirm alternator strategy after replacement. If start-stop annoys you, use the button to disable it per drive. Don't sabotage the hardware. Treat smart systems smartly, and you'll still need one last habit to avoid the most dramatic, most expensive failures. Mistake number one, bad jump start habits that spike modules and scar plates. Sparking on the post, reverse clips in a rush, revving the donor like a race start, or yanking cables off while both alternators are loaded, each move risks voltage spikes and cooked diodes. Thin plates also hate shock charging from zero. Do this instead. Connect positive to positive, then negative to a clean chassis ground away from the battery. Let the donor idle five minutes to pre-charge the dead battery, then start the car. After it catches, leave both linked at idle for a minute so alternator load tapers before you disconnect. Use decent gauge cables or a lithium jump pack rated for your engine size. Safe starts keep electronics calm, and now you can lock in long life with a simple routine you'll actually keep. How to extend battery life starting tonight. Give the battery a full charge once a month, more often if you do short trips. Clean clamps and check the hold down every oil change. Log the install date and capacity with a paint marker on the case where you can read it fast. Replace proactively at three to five years in hot regions, or when repeated conductance tests trend down so it dies on your schedule, not in traffic. If you store the car, disconnect the negative or use a smart maintainer that reaches absorption and float. A tender that never finishes invites sulfation. For EVs and hybrids, remember the tiny 12 volt still wakes computers and closes contactors. Keep it on a maintainer during long sits and replace it on time. Quick diagnosis when it still goes flat. Dead after two days? Measure dark current after module sleep, pull fuses or unplug add-ons until the draw drops below spec. Dies only after short errands? Charge Philly, then check alternator output under load and stop driving with every accessory blazing. Random no start after rain? Check trunk well water, sunroof drains, and hidden grounds under trim for corrosion. Crank strong but screens flicker? Look for loose clamps and cracked terminal fuses. Starter clicks once? Load test the battery and bench test the starter. Patterns point to causes, and causes point to cheap fixes before you're shopping for modules. Car batteries don't just die. Habits kill them. Invisible drains, summer heat, short trip starvation, guesswork diagnostics, ugly terminals, wrong replacements, and reckless jump starts. Swap those for simple routines and a battery becomes boring, in the best way. It starts the car, feeds the computers, and disappears from your thoughts for years at a time. Do the small things now, and the only time you'll think about your battery is when you're writing the install date on the next one, on your terms.